beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes bringing you this video from the breathtaking Azores Islands from the island of Saint Georges where my yearly retreats take place. I'm going to be launching my yearly retreats for 2021 this upcoming October. So if you want to join me here in paradise, make sure to click on this link that's going to be popping up here or you'll see a link to my retreats page in the description box below. You'll have to join that email list because I'm only launching my retreats to that email list. I'm only doing two retreats in 2021. So if you want to join me here, here, make sure to be on that email list and you'll be the first to know in October when the enrollment opens for 2021. So today we are talking about a bit of a controversial topic. I've been meaning to shoot this video for quite a while and it just never got to the right timing, but this video is about something pretty controversial and that is money and spirituality. It shouldn't be controversial, but it is controversial. So that's why I decided to shoot this email. I get a lot of comments and questions from people asking me whether when we spiritually awaken, when you have a spiritual awakening and you become more aware and a more awakened human being, what should your relationship to money be? Should you be anti-money? Should you not care about money? Should you just completely give up all material comforts? And so I get a lot of these questions not to mention that I do get some criticism sometimes. I have some people sending me emails and comments sometimes saying that I shouldn't be charging for my services because I'm a spiritual person and spiritual people shouldn't even touch money. And the fact that I charge for my services, that that's already showing that I'm not a spiritual person. So I get some of that too, some of, some of that type of, of kind of, you know, negative feedback. So I wanted to shoot this video to discuss this exact topic because because money and spirituality it's something that seems to to not go hand in hand. But if we don't correct our relationship with money, then your life is going to be a little bit less fulfilling, right? So this video is going to be about that. And I want to start by saying that I myself used to have a really toxic relationship with money. So I'll give you a little bit, two phases of my life so you can see kind of what happened to me in my path and in my relationship with money. Before my spiritual awakening, I was really attached to money. So I used money as a way to sort of make myself feel better about myself. So the clothes I wore, the, you know, the, the type of brands that I use, the places that I went, I used money as a way to make me feel better about myself. So I had a toxic relationship with money. I had an attached relationship with money. And then when I had my spiritual awakening, I went completely the other way. So when I had my spiritual awakening, I initially did what so many people around the world do when they start going through a spiritual awakening. And that is I completely pushed away money. And I pushed away money because I thought, as so many of us believe, that as soon as you become a spiritual person, you're just not supposed to care about money. You're not even supposed to touch it. It's supposed to be something like unholy or, you know, we've heard so many things about money that the that money is the root of all evil. We've heard a ton of things about money. And so when I became spiritually awakened, I initially pushed money away. I didn't want anything to do with it. And so my relationship went, went from attachment to aversion. Okay. And I went to, through these, these two polar opposites. Well, as my spiritual uh, development kind of continued forward and I continued my meditation practice and I continued to connect with my guides, something really shifted in me. And it shifted in me at the point when I started to do my meditations and I began to have visions of what part of my life mission was going to be here. And, and the visions that I started to get was of a healing and retreat center that I needed to build in Portugal. I, I started to receive the visions of that part of my life mission. And right there, when that happened to me, I really had to think, ponder, really sit with the idea that I needed to correct my relationship with money. I needed to understand it because how would I build a healing and retreat center of the size and magnitude that I was seeing in my vision? How would I ever build it without money? So something started to feel off about, about this whole idea, this belief, that this, this destructive belief that money and spirituality, they don't go hand in hand. They cannot coexist. If you like money, 
money. You can't be a spiritual person if you're a spiritual person. You just can't, don't, shouldn't care about money. You should just give everything away and, I don't know, go around begging for food like some monks do in the East. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with when you spiritually awaken if you feel like it's a part of your path to completely let go of all material possessions and become a monk and go around, you know, with your bowl asking for food, there's nothing wrong with that path either. So I'm not judging it, but I started to realize that that wasn't my path. And I started to realize that that wasn't the path of so many spiritual people on the planet. And so the belief that money and spirituality didn't go together and that there was something wrong with money and that money was the root of all evil, I really had to reassess whether I believed this or not, especially in light of the visions that I started to have about my own life mission. So one of the first questions that I started asking myself as I began to contemplate and really feel deeply what was going on between spirituality and money, one of the first questions that I pondered was, is money non-spiritual? Like, is money not spiritual? Are they completely mutually exclusive? And I start, as I started to sit with this, I remember I was in trance meditation once and one of my favorite guides, one of my main guides on my guidance team, he came through and he came to me and he just said, you know, I don't, I don't know how you expect to build your life mission without money. So you're going to have to correct your relationship to money. That's sort of what he said to me in a nutshell. And I remember at that point, I began to look deeper at the root because this is what's important and this is what's important for us to remove from our from our, our quantum self, from our minds, from our auric fields, from our chakras. We have to be able to remove the belief that money is non-spiritual or that money is against spirituality, that money and spirituality can't go ex coexist. I had to be able to excavate that from within me, but I wanted to understand where that came from. And the idea that money is evil, the idea that money is bad, it began to be templated on us. There's a religious templating that comes from a, from pretty much every religion in the world. There's the idea that money is bad. I'm not going to go into the reasons why that was instilled in us, but it was for control reasons, right? Back when, religious, when religions were instituted, it was important for religious leaders to keep control of the population and keep control of the people that they were controlling. And one way to do that is through money. So money was being kind of funneled into leadership of organizations and leadership of religions. But then the leadership, it was okay for leadership of organizations and religions to have money, but then it wasn't okay for Joe Schmo to have money. <laughs> so, and on the one hand, religious leaders were saying that money was horrible and you shouldn't have money and, and, you know, money is the root of all evil. But then on the other hand, they were accumulating a lot of it. <laughs> and that's how they became very controlling systems on the planet was through the use or misuse of money, okay? So that's a little bit of the history on how this templating got programmed in all of us, that money is the root of all evil. There's a little bit of truth to it in the sense that if I am spiritually unawakened, if I have a really big ego, if I have a destructive ego and I have money, then money can be used to cause destruction on the planet or to cause negative things to happen on the planet. There's no question about that. But it's not because of the money. You see, money is a neutral energy, all right? First of all, money is spiritual because everything is spiritual. Everything is energy and everything is source. You can't escape source, right? Everything is source or God or creator. So money has to be a part of that energy also. But money is very neutral as an energy. It can be used to go to the right or it can be used to go to the left. But it's not the energy of money that makes those things happen. It's the energy of the person that has money. Okay, so this is what's really important. And I've had so many conversations with so many spiritually awakened people and light workers over the past couple of years, uh, mostly because there are so many people waking up right now. And on this topic of money, there was a lot of people were still very uncomfortable because a lot of them had left profitable careers in corporate America or in these different areas where they weren't happy. And they thought that the reason that they weren't happy and that now that they were more spiritual, they shouldn't even care about money. So they were really conflicted about this. And so I've had many conversations with people about this. And here's the thing. Again, 
It's not the money that's the issue. It's the energy of the person that holds the money. So what I keep telling light workers and spiritually awakened people is please don't push money away because if you have a really strong soul mission to do on this planet, like myself and like so many of us, so many of you that watch this vi these videos, if you have a strong soul mission on the planet, more likely than not, it will involve the use of money because the use of money is so common down here in this 3D human reality, okay? It's a tool of this reality, all right? So so that's, I wanted to kind of put that out of the way first and foremost is in saying that money is a neutral energy. Money is not evil in any way, shape, or form. Money is spiritual. And the key to money is the relationship that you have with it, okay? So I'm going to go into that right now. So here's a little extra note that, that I want to leave you with so that this energy is implanted in your energy system if you want to receive it, okay? I'm going to give you a little bit of an, help you ha go into a little bit of an energy shift right now, just as you're watching this video, a little bit of an abundance shift or a money shift for you so that you could shed all of these negative templates that you've had on your system that we've had for generations and generations and generations, and they just keep accumulating all us on us. I'm going to help you clear this out right now okay and here's the mantra or affirmation that i want you to hold in your heart if you're ready to accept this okay it's this understanding that the more spiritually awakened people that have money the faster the planet can shift because money is a currency that we can use to transform help transform the planet yes we transform the planet through energy and that's always first but money is a currency it's a way for us to build things to change things on the planet okay so the more spiritually awakened people that have money the more the planet can change more quickly into projects and institutions and companies and things that will help the planet shift more towards light, okay, and towards less destruction. The more spiritually unawakened people that have money, if money is accumulated only by, by people that are unawakened, then money is going to continue to be used for the destruction of the planet, for profit only, without looking at, at the ecosystems around it. I mean, we have seen across multiple generations that money can be used for good and it can be used for bad, but that money is only going to be used for more negative things as long as light workers and spiritually awakened people continue to believe that they should push money away and they shouldn't have it. <laughs> you see, so instill this in your system, the sense that you live in an abundant universe. You look around you. I mean, look where I am right now. <laughs> as I'm shooting this video, there's birds everywhere. There's flies, there's bees, there's flowers. There's, there's so much abundance in nature. There's there's so much abundance on Mother Earth, and that abundance is destined for us also. We are deserving of it also, okay? So begin to receive that and to feel worthy of that. The more awakened you are and the more at your disposal you have money, the more you will be able to affect change on the planet. So please don't be ashamed or afraid to have money. Don't think that money is evil, that if you have money, you're not spiritual, and that if you're spiritual, you shouldn't think about about money or even care about it. Let's remove that from your energy system right now. And again, I'm going to reinforce this because I repeat this so much, but it's so important. The more that spiritually awakened people develop positive relationships with money and learn how to accumulate it, the more the planet can change into companies, into institutions, into projects, organizations, nonprofits that'll help change the world. So don't be afraid of money and don't think it's evil because it's not. So one of the first things that needs to happen for you to re-establish a proper relationship with money is to start from a position of wholeness and worthiness, okay? <laughs> now, what does this mean? It means that I feel completely whole and worthy within myself first, meaning that that money is not controlling me or it's not affecting my level of worth and worthiness, okay? So this means that I feel whole and worthy whether I have $10 in my bank account or a million dollars in my bank account, whether I live in a $20 million mansion in Malibu or whether I live in a shack in a forest in the middle of nowhere, my worth 
is exactly the same. And I know it and I feel it and I stand in that power. All right. From a worthiness perspective, I also feel completely deserving of the abundance that the universe wants to send me. And this is so, so key because so many of us, we push away abundance unknowingly by simply not feeling worthy of it. <laughs> you see, we are, we're the only creature on the planet that feels this sense of unworthiness, right? Like you've never met a bird that's looking into a whole field filled with worms and you've never met a bird say, oh my God, there's just so many worms for me. I'm not, I'm not deserving of all these worms. <laughs> you've never met a bird or you've never met any other creature. You've never met a lion in the Serengeti that looks out at all of the animals, the, all of the zebras that they have to hunt. You've never seen a lion say, oh my God, there's too many zebras out there for me. I'm totally undeserving of all of this. <laughs> you see, I could keep going on and on and on, but we're the only animal, we're the only species on this planet that feels a sense of unworthiness when it comes to the abundance that Mother Earth has to provide. And money is a part of that abundance, okay? So come into a position of wholeness and into a position of worthiness, because then when you're in that position, you're, you are in power, meaning that the money will never control you. You see, this is the, this is the part of the puzzle that was missing for me before my spiritual awakening. I had a negative relationship with money because money was controlling me. I used money to make myself feel better about me. So I'd buy Gucci bags or I'd buy whatever God knows, Prada something, or, you know, I'd buy all these ridiculous ridiculous things, but it wasn't because I wanted to have fun with them. It was because I thought those things would make me feel better about myself. So money was controlling me. Okay. And that's really the root of excessive materialism and excessive consumerism on the planet is because we're using money when we feel low self-esteem. We're using money as a way to plug holes inside of us and that's never going to work. Okay. So to start out your work of attracting abundance and attracting money to you, start from the position that I am whole within myself. My worth will never change whether I have $1 in my bank account or a million dollars. It'll never matter. My worth is always the same. I am so valued and so loved. And I am deserving of all of the abundance that the universe wishes to bestow upon me. Okay. So that's the first thing to do when working, when starting to work with the energy of money. So now for the pro tip on how to work with money, on how to play with money without that money becoming powerful and controlling of you, okay? And the trick or the pro tip for you is to relate to money with detachment or non-attachment, okay? That's, that's key. That's the key trick. That's the key strategy in developing a relationship with money, in my opinion, is to relate to it with detachment or with non-attachment, okay? The moment you cling to money, it controls you. But the moment you push it away, push it, push it away, it also controls you, okay? Attachment, clinging, or aversion, they are both forms of control, okay? So what you're looking for is a middle ground where I'm not pulling and I'm not pushing. I'm in a neutral state, okay? And that's the place of non-attachment or detachment, all right? So I use money as a way to pay my bills, my life, live my life comfortably. I'm not here to be poor. I'm not here to live a poor life. <laughs> and I don't think any of us need to live a poor life. Okay. So I use money to pay my bills, live comfortably, but also to fulfill my life mission on the planet. And I, and I do that unapologetically. <laughs> I used to apologize for having these visions. I don't anymore. Okay. And it's important for you to establish this also within yourself. All right. So that non-attachment means that you use money very flexibly. Okay. You don't grip, you don't hold on, you don't cling to it and you don't push it away. It's a nice ebb and flow in and out without fear. Okay. So, so that's the number one pro tip on having a, rela a positive relationship with money so that it doesn't control you. But let me go a little bit deeper on one th what this means to me, okay? So let me go a little bit deeper. The way that I relate to money is not what non-attachment means to me is that I don't take ownership of the money, okay? So maybe this will help you. I do not take ownership of the money that reaches me. And I learned this beautiful trick through a wonderful little book called It's Not Your Money by Tosha Silver. <laughs> so this, I'll leave, I'll leave links to that book in the description box below if you want to read it. 
it's such a gem. It's so beautiful. And it really helped me develop this relationship with money of non-ownership, meaning that when I receive money, I use it to pay my bills. I use it to think about my projects. I use it to invest in my future healing and retreat center in Portugal. I use it to fulfill my dreams. But you see, there's no ownership. It's not my money. <laughs> it's not my money. I don't consider it my money. It's simply some currency, some energy that the universe has thrown over to me. And I'm now going to use that energy outward in different ways. Okay. So I love this playful way of working with money, of not taking ownership of it, because that really helps me continue to have this positive relationship with money that's very flexible, very open and very non-attached. Okay. So it keeps my ego quiet around money so that my ego doesn't start to think, oh my God, look, money in your bank account. You're getting more money in your bank account. You, you're all, you know, look at you. You're the shit now. <laughs> so that's what egos sometimes do when they start to cling on to things. Okay. So when, when I started using this technique of not taking ownership of money, first of all, abundance started reaching me so much. Like the, the abundance exponentially grew when my energy shifted around this because I'm just not taking ownership of it. I use it as a currency that the universe sends me in order to materialize things in this 3D reality as part of my mission and to have fun while fulfilling my mission. Okay. So I want to leave this ding, ding here. <laughs> I want to leave this ding, ding here. Don't be afraid to use money to make your life feel more fun, to just have fun down here, to enjoy yourself, to enjoy this world. Don't be afraid of that. Okay. We don't have to fulfill our missions through sacrifice and poverty anymore. That's the old way of doing things. A lot of religions have this, this templating again, that the more religious you are, the more you, you know, you have to cloister yourself away in a monastery and you don't even touch money anymore. I really disagree that that's the majority of the paths for everybody. Okay. So for the, for the majority of us, we can have fun down here. We're meant to have fun down here. So don't take your mission so seriously that you're only using money for the mission and you're just, you know, you don't even allow yourself to go on a trip or to go to a restaurant with a friend and just enjoy their company. You see, money is to be used also for you to have fun down here. And that's spiritual too. Okay. So I wanted to leave this kind of little side note. Yes, I use my money to fulfill my mission for sure. Sure, I use the money that comes in, but I use it to have fun also and to live a comfortable life. I am not here to, you know, sleep on the floor without a mattress or anything like that. Like, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to have fun too. And that's what money helps to do is to help you have fun, to help you live a comfortable life. All right. So no need to shy away from that. But when you don't take ownership of money, okay. When you don't take ownership of money and you just let it come in and out, in and out, circulating back and forth, you're going to notice when you're in a position of wholeness, I've already talked about that, right? Wholeness and worthiness, that's the first step. And then when I start to play with money in this detached kind of relationship that lacks ownership, the money will start to come to you more and more and more, okay? And remember what I said earlier, I'm going to repeat it again because this is something that really needs to seep in to all of our systems. The more that spiritually awakened people receive the abundance of the universe, the faster the planet can change, the more we can funnel that money into things that are spiritually enlightening, into things that are protective of the environment and protective of nature, into companies that are protective of human qualities and not just, you know, not just for profit and that's all they care about. The more that spiritually awakened people have the availability ability of money, the more things can change on the planet. So please don't be afraid of using money. Don't be afraid of money at all. Don't think that money and spirituality do not go hand in hand. Release all of that, beautiful soul. Release all of that from your system. That's not true. It's a destructive belief that's held so many of us down in the spirit, in spiritual communities. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> all right, beautiful soul. 
Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below if you struggle with money. Do you have a difficult relationship with money or have you had a difficult relationship with money? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to go deeper on the topic of abundance, I shot a law of attraction video. So I'm going to leave links to that in the description box below for you to go into the myths and to how to work with the law of attraction. That'll take you a different uh, layer deeper on how you'll be able to attract abundance abundance into your life, including money. Okay. So I'll leave links to that video in the description box below. All right, beautiful soul from the breathtaking Azores Island. I will be back, uh, from not, not Azores Island, but from the breathtaking islands of the Azores. I'm in Saint George in particular, but from Saint George, I send you my love. I will talk to you soon in another video. Mwah. Thank you.